you know, he's so animated and he just wants to do so much. And of course, your wife, your amazing wife, who uh, who actually knew me back then when I had cancer, which I, you know, we I didn't know that, but you know how life comes back around. So, um, but I needed to, I wanted you on this show. I wanted you because of a few reasons, but the main reason I think is because you do speak hope into people. You do. You are a life changer. You know, we have a lot of things in common and we also have other things that are not in common, but that's what makes us unique, right? Um, but I love the fact that when I get a chance to speak in the same venue with you, man, it's just you elevate my game. I love it. It's awesome. Um, and I miss you, man. You know, we, we I've, been, I've seen you at church, speaking at church. You're an amazing, amazing preacher as well. When you get a chance to do the word of God is awesome. So, you know, again, we have a connection. We've always been connected. We look forward to doing events. He was just getting ready to do a conference. I was, you know, I've, I've been doing my women's conference. <laughs> so everything kind of stopped. So tell me about that for you. Because I know for me, April was a huge month for me. I had three events back to back to back, and they were all gone. What What's happened with you and your life and, and your tours? Man, you know, you know, it's interesting. I think when all this happened, one of the challenges that I think I faced like many other people was what next? Like, you know, all of this happens. I think you first think, what is your security, right? You first think of your own health, you think of your loved ones, and then your family. And then it starts to hit you that life is going to probably change. Yeah. You know, the, 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 like the intensity rose really quick. And so, you know, April's looked like a lot of reevaluation, it's looked like a lot of creativity. To be honest with you, this month, I actually brought on a coach. It's been a while. I've had three other coaches that, I've, that have worked with me throughout my, my my business and even into my coaching certification. And I decided to bring on another coach this season. And um, it was probably one of the best things I've done in a while because I felt like I was at this like pivotal moment in my life before everything happened where I was shifting a lot of my focus and I was really – narrowing down some things that I really felt passionate about and wanted to build. I mean, I, when I think of my business, I think of, um, I don't think just myself, I think other people, how do I bring other people on? How do I grow? How do I scale? All these things. And so I had a really big vision, but I had, a, I think I was kind of limited in some areas. But so one of the things that I did in this season was to bring on a coach to really help challenge me. Somebody who's doing this, somebody who's financially doing well, but somebody who I know could really challenge me to grow and really help me contextualize a lot of what was in my head and in my heart. And so along with that, of course, you know, I've got kids here, my son who's, who's not going to, he's not in school, my daughter who's 15 months, my wife is not working from home. So it's it's been a lot of shifting and a lot of adjusting. And I'll tell you one thing, it's, it's made me realize things both about myself made me realize things about my kids and my wife, like our, 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 our cohesiveness as a team. And I, you know what? Here's the truth. Like, there's some of the spiritual side of things where I feel like in the midst of chaos, God's peace shows up, right? Because it's only in chaos that you even know what real peace is. Correct. Right? But it's also the fact of, like, that there were, there's this overwhelming sense of, like, I would never have this opportunity again. When will I ever have the opportunity to have my kids home and my wife home like this? It's not an opportunity that oftentimes comes. And so I think what I'm trying to do in the grant, like, again, yeah, it's nice. You know, we've got a nice little stimulus check. Thank you. You know, I mean? you know we, we got a little something, you know what I mean? But the reality is, like, you have to walk the season out, like, one step at a time. And you have to, from many facets, whether you're an individual, whether you're an entrepreneur, whether you're a parent, whether you're in a relationship, whatever it is that consumes you or that makes adds value to your life, you're gonna have to re-strategize and retool. You're gonna have to pivot. You're gonna have to get creative. This is a season now where you just can't sit down. You can't, you know, you can't, you can't throw a pitch party because nobody's coming, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> well, they're not. They're not allowed to come. <laughs>
my business is supposed to be like, what a lot of things are supposed to look like. And I think, you know, oftentimes that, that can be lost in the busyness of success and significance and coaching and speaking. There's all of those things that can make us feel good about ourselves. And here's the thing, how do you feel now when everything you thought was good is on pause or at least for some period of time it's not accessible? And so I think it, it really begs a different question for, and again, I've had conversations, David, with people who genuinely feel like, even now, well, I'm not doing enough online, I'm not doing enough on social media, mm-hmm. and I'm not like that, and I need to, and they're feeling this sense of, like, guilt and fear and anxiety. Anxiety. Uh, yeah. And it's, and it's, you know, I'm telling people, like, okay, wait a minute, how do you get creative? There are people who, friends I know, losing jobs, um, just had a conversation today with a friend of mine who says, I got I got I got to break the news to my employees that, that I have to let them all go. Yeah. You know, and you know his business is is in the is in the event space, and you know I know how hard he's been working. I know how hard he's been grinding. I see him. We talk all the time, and so it breaks my heart because he's got to figure out next. What next? He's got to he's got to be shut. He's got to be too. He's got to pivot. Yeah. And so I'm going to tell you one thing that's going to come out of this: are story after story after story of people getting through this hard season well that is what I'm hoping for you know that's the reason I started the show and this and, and is because I wanted to share that with people and give them hope so they can get through it because the part is the hard part is to are you going to be able to get through it and that's the hard part if you can get through it then the blessing will come at some point now the one thing that I love that Benny just talked about you know it's about having that patience and, and having uh, retooling and, and, and finding you know, finding what you're meant to do, right? Well, for the last over 10 years, I've been, I've had the blessing of being able to live my purpose and to share with people what I truly am supposed to do with my life. I had a conversation with a client today where I explained to her how, you know, in my life, if you had a million dollars, what would you do? I would do exactly what I'm doing now. I would actually continue to do what I'm doing. I would just invest more in the projects and invest more in what I'm doing. So I've had the blessing of really truly finding out through cancer, as I reveal my purpose, what I'm meant to do in life, to know my passion, to know my gifts, and know my talents. So again, you know, Benny, you're right on. You know, this is a time where you really, if tomorrow doesn't come, have you done what you're meant to do? I think that's the question that I've always asked myself. You've asked me that too, and I've said to you, here's what I believe you're supposed to do. It's up to you to get there. But listen, we all get there when we're supposed to get there, right? Um, but it has to be genuine. It has to be something that you're ready to go after, right? Yeah. So, yeah. so I, I commend you for that, and you're absolutely correct. This is a time right now to really figure out what is it that you're meant to do, and were you really doing what you were supposed to, right? Now, I always ask this of every single guest. Give me one word, Benny. Uh, people have used gratitude, faith, consistency, obedience. They've used pivot already. They've used seasons. Uh, uh, home, like, you know, home is where the heart is, things like that. What is one word that you can share with us um, that gets you through these moments right now and, and, and inspires you and, and, and can give hope to somebody at home right now? You know, it's interesting. Um, a few years ago, I came up with a life purpose statement. And I, I, I know it so well because I rehearsed it about a million times. It says, I, I, and I use a, I have a, an image, okay? A freebie to the audience, okay? If you find an image that you relate to, use that as a way to start your life purpose day. So I am a tall, firm, deep rooted tree planted in the lives of people that empower, inspire, and evoke life changing transformation. That's my purpose. That's my life purpose day. The word that always stood out to me was this word evoke. 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 It means to draw forward, to elicit, to summon, to call out. This season, people need to be evoked. People need to be called out of their place of fear. People need to be called out of their place of complacency. People need to be called out into their purpose. They need to. They need to step up. You know, the 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 image that I had of this was um, when God tells uh, Adam, "Where are you?" Huh. Right. <laughs> right. After after one of the biggest disappointments, after life just took a turn, right? 
time. Like, sure. Our, our experience, he, he says, where are you? And he said, I heard you coming. And he said, and he, he evoked him. He called him out. He drew him from this place of disappointment, of fear. Of shame. Of shame, complacency, um, missing the mark. And I think, I think that, that really embodies a lot of emotions that, like, everybody's not feeling the same thing. Some people are upset. Should never take that job, or I should have done more. I should have saved more. You know, that there's all these reasons why someone could stay hiding behind the bush like Adam. But then God calls us out. Like I think you can't talk about purpose and life without talking about God. This is just my own opinion. That's that that because I feel like it comes from something. It comes from somewhere. Um, without hyper spiritualizing the conversation. Sure. Sure. That word evoke just means to draw forward, and I think people need to get evoked. I think people need to be called out. I think somebody needs to say, listen, you have been suffering, and if, if this isn't a reminder to you, guess what? If, if today it's corona, tomorrow it's something else. Correct. Right? That's going to remind you to not stay complacent. And so that word for me just rings true. Um, that's awesome. That's, right. that's a part of my, my, my life purpose statement. Even on here it says... Empower, inspire, inspire, evoke. Yeah. Well, before I finish this segment, can you say your that line again about the tree? Can you just say that again one more time out loud? Yeah. So I am a tall, firm, deep rooted tree, planted in the lives of people that empower, inspires, and evokes life changing transformation. Amen. That's my that is awesome. Well, you were listening to Benny Salas, a true friend in my life. I'm so blessed that I had, I, I'm alive to be able to meet him, to listen to him speak, and to actually share a stage with him. It's been a, an absolute pleasure and, and blessing. So he's calling you out. He, his word is evoke. We're at a time that right now, I'm going to call you out. Because like he said, a lot of us are getting complacent, getting lazy. We just don't want to move. And we're going to make every excuse in the world that right now we don't have to move because the world is not moving. Well, I'm going to tell you right now that the world is going to continue to move. The world is actually changing. The world is healing right now. The planet is healing. The water is healing. Nature is healing. We're just not moving if we don't want to. But I love that Benny used that word evoke and to call you out, to draw you out, to go after your dreams, to go after what you're meant to do in life. To find purpose in everything you do. Thank you, Benny, for that word. And thank you for that message. Because right now, we're going to call you out. Go after it. We want to hear from you. I want to know what this message meant to you. And I look forward to seeing how many people get up because of this message from Benny Salas. And like I always say, find hope, have faith, and live every day with purpose. I want to thank my guest, Benny Salas, and this has been another segment of Life Changes for Life, and with me, a true life changer. God bless you guys. Until next time.